We still live in a country of colonialism. We're still living in the day-to-day -day trauma of the impacts of genocide and of residential school. That's a generational challenge that we're constantly facing. And so by creating this movement of conservation, which means that the lands can stay in the way that they need to be for us to find those solutions and answers, but also in active stewardship of those places, then I'm hoping that we're exposing youth to that power, to that healing, to that love, and to that hope. You know, there was no one more affected by the impacts of climate change in Canada than Indigenous peoples. So many communities are still to this day evacuated and unable to be in their landscapes. There is such a thing as climate trauma. There is, I'm seeing it live right now in, in communities and we can do better. I'm a, a registered professional forester by trade, but even in the efforts uh, of education and school, it was always about how can we do things in a way that respects the rhythms and values and approaches of nature itself, which aligned with who I am as, a, as an Innu woman. I think that's, that's part of why I'm so excited about the work that we're doing because we know our elders say it all the time, if you wanna heal, you go to the land. If you wanna understand who you are, you go to the land. If you wanna find your place in the world, you go to the land. Valerie's start at the Indigenous Leadership Initiative, which was in many ways her idea, started out as part of a campaign that I was running called the International Boreal Conservation Campaign. And she and many of the other Indigenous employees of that campaign decided they needed to form their own organization, and Valerie led that effort. Indigenous-led conservation systems are the best current way that we have to address the biodiversity crisis, the climate crisis, and the human rights challenges that we face globally. You know, the Indigenous Leadership Initiative is the only organization like it in Canada, and one of the few anywhere in the world where Indigenous people themselves are taking control of and command of the conservation agenda. And that's critical. It's really a group of leaders and Indigenous peoples from, from across what is now known as Canada, as well as our close allies who are really dedicated to doing the work with nations and bringing people together to advance the cause of Indigenous-led conservation and stewardship at a national scale. And that includes everything from lobbying the federal government, working with provincial and territorial governments, working with various nations, uh, advancing both Indigenous-led conservation, such as Indigenous protected and conserved areas, but also stewardship programs like Guardians, where it's really about people becoming and earning the responsibility through a job of taking care of the land. There's now over a thousand uh, working every day to take care of the lands, not only for our nations, but also for everybody who depends on, on healthy environments and, and on the, the values that, in particular, the boreal region brings to the world. Since its founding, VAL and the ILI have supported the leadership of First Nations that has created three indigenous protected and conservation areas in the Northwest Territories. These protected areas span over 50,000 square kilometers. A lot of these areas are within the boreal forest, the largest intact forest ecosystem left in the world. We hope that this year's award which marks the 11th anniversary of the Bright Award, further empowers this year's winner in her efforts to support Indigenous-led conservation in Canada. Valerie is an extraordinary leader. Her skills with people and politics and her ability to understand science, she's put all that together. I admire her humility. I admire her intelligence. I admire her ability to speak with many different voices to many different audiences. She has a gift of bringing people together and, and speaking to us in a ways that we can best understand no matter who we are. 
Well, she's not the kind of person that seeks an award. And so I'm sure it probably makes her uncomfortable, but it makes the rest of us really happy to know that she's being recognized because her leadership inspires a lot of people. She's inspired not only her colleagues and in, in the indigenous community, but all the rest of us in conservation because she's so clearly drawn the connection between culture, conservation, human rights, and the way that we can move forward together in the future. What does it mean for me as an individual to accept this award when the reality of my work is that it's collective? I really had to kind of think through my own instincts of humility. I'm honored and touched and I know that this will help me continue to do the work that I do. The empowerment of Indigenous nation doesn't have to happen at the expense and the disempowerment of others. Valuing and supporting the work of Indigenous nations is good for everybody.